Hi everyone. Today we're going to talk about the seven essential parts of a PLC system and they are the CPU, inputs and outputs, analog inputs and outputs, and we have specialty uh, inputs and outputs. We then have programming tools. We have HMI, which represents human machine interface. And then finally, the last one or the seventh essential part of the PLC is networking. We're going to talk, uh, quickly talk on each subject and uh, so you have a better understanding of the overall system of the PLC. So let's start with the CPU. CPU stands for Central Processing Unit and it is actually the brains of the uh, PLC. Now we have um, uh, different manufacturers who manufacture these PLCs and they want to sell them by themselves so they will have their own uh, chipset that they use within the uh, CPU and the brains of the PLC there and because of that uh, there has been a consorted effort in order to uh, standardize on the languages that we use to program the PLCs. So we have IEC 61131 and it defines five different languages that we can use to program the PLC. The first one is structured text. The second one is function block diagram. The second one, the third one is sequential function chart. Then we have instruction list. And then finally we have ladder diagram. Now 95% of the installations are ladder diagram. However, the other um, methods of programming are still valid and they work well. Now remember, even though a manufacturer um, says that he will comply to this standard, it doesn't mean that the it's exactly the same. And you can't just take one program from one manufacturer's controller and put it into another without some to rewrite the software and look at everything within that controller. So this gives you the format or the look and feel of what that look, looks like, but it could be different for different manufacturers. And the other thing that they were looking at is usually the manufacturer will specify the PLC scan. And the scan um, literally is the reading of the inputs, executing the program, uh, doing the diagnostics and communication, updating your, your outputs. And scan times can be synchronous or asynchronous, meaning that um, asynchronous usually has multiple chips involved. In the, in the CPU and it will read the I.O. at any time during that scan and update without you actually knowing it. So you have to be specific as, as to when you read your I.O. Um, so the, the next one, that's a CPU unit. Next one is inputs and outputs. And PLC inputs, they come from a variety of different things. It'll be uh, things like uh, digital I.O., um, like photoelectrics, um, proximity sensors, they come in. They could be switches, contacts, and up on my screen here, you see that here's my input coming in, my um, indicator card coming in, and then my actual uh, ladder diagram, what it looks like on the input side. And what you'll note is, is that the difference between the input and your outputs and your CPU is that everything is isolated by light waves. So light actually um, is triggering the actual input to fire. That's why what we, what we call isolation. So if we look at the outputs, again, digital outputs, here's my ladder diagram. I turn the output on, it fires the output, and then it can be either, you know, controlling a coil, a light, a motor turning on and off. The next one is analog. In analog, up here what we're doing is taking the analog output. We are then um, going to drive this motor. And usually it's going to be a motor speed. And when we talk analog, we talk bit resolution. So it's, instead of being just on off, it's a range of on off. So there's my analog output. And then we have an analog in. In this particular case, I'm looking at the uh, height of the level of the tank of the uh, stuff that's in the bottom here. So then we have specialty I.O. and a lot of the times manufacturers will actually um, uh, create 
a lot of specialty items within the controller itself, such as high-speed counters, uh, position control uh, units, etc. Or they come as a separate card that you can purchase and put it in the, the uh, PLC. Next is programming tools, and in programming tools, uh, what you have is your, here's a typical PLC here, um, and then what we'll do is have a computer to program this, and the computer will load, be loaded with software, and there's usually multiple ways of connecting. It could be Ethernet, it could be USB, it can be serial, but there's a method of which to talk to that PLC to program it in one of those five different languages to do the work that we want to do. The um, next thing we want to uh, take a look at is HMI. In HMI, the human machine interface. So, prime example of that is a Horner PLC, which is the HMI is actually built right into the PLC unit itself. So, here we have the uh, full screen with the function keys available. Outside of that, we could also use uh, programming software such as my previous screen here which actually showed the uh, um, advanced HMI software running on that computer talking to the PLC in order to uh, take a look at that also with programming packages a lot of them will actually come with a simulator and what you can do with uh, simulators is that with the advanced HMI screen as I have up here we can actually simulate um, call that up talk to the PLC simulator so we can duplicate everything that we see before we actually go on site and try to troubleshoot this the system so here you see my stack light I have a, a series of uh, valves here and what I'm doing is just clicking on it and triggering it the program to fire so here I'm checking my sequence of operation Then the last thing we talk about is networking. Networking is a vast range uh, to discuss. And in that, um, what we can do is we can have peer-to-peer -peer communication, meaning that one PLC will talk to another PLC. When that happens, most manufacturers will provide some method of doing that. And typically it's a group of uh, registers that are shared amongst all of the network that you have connected. Networking can also include um, talking or sending email out, as you see on the screen here now. I just have a do more PLC. It sends out email through Gmail to the phone or computer indicating something's up or something's wrong. We can also grab information um, through PLCs using protocol and protocol is just the way in which the uh, PLC can understand and so that we can uh, extract information from it and up here we can use and typically some of the open protocols would be like Modbus TCP Ethernet IP uh, that kind of uh, thing Modbus uh, RTU uh, just to name a couple of uh, examples armor um, on host link would be another one And we can do several things when we network things together. Uh, we can bring things right into um, Excel. And uh, I'll just uh, forward this a little bit so we can actually see our Excel. Um, so we can bring it right into Excel, have that actually display information as we uh, in real time as, it, as the program is being executed. So that's it for now. Now again, that's a, the seven essential parts of the PLC system. Again, CPU, inputs and outputs, analog I.O., special, specialty I.O., programming tools, HMI, networking. And that's about it. Um, See, so it's very confusing sometimes. So if you really want to, you, manufacturers are more than willing to help you out. You can give them a, a quick email with your um, specifications as what you need in a PLC system and they can steer you in the right direction. Now if this video has been helpful to you please give us a thumbs up and it will help other people find the information on the internet. Also 
all this information and links to some of the um, networking information and inputs and outputs and things like that that I've demonstrated is actually located on our website and that's at accautomation.ca and if while you're there if you subscribe to our um, our website you'll be able to download this robust free data logging uh, ebook as well as uh, understanding uh, addressing and numbering systems within the PLC thanks for watching